Okay, so this is your lesson on transformations. We're going to talk about four basic transformations to begin. And those would be translations, reflections, rotations, and dilations. So let's start with some translations. To start with translations, we're going to start with this little triangle here, triangle ABC. And I drew that in quadrant two. If you remember your quadrants, that would be quadrant one and two here. We might use that later. But a translation is just when we take that triangle and we slide it across like this, and then we slide it up or down like this. So it's, it's really a translation is a slide from one position to another position. And that translation has the triangle keep the same size and the same shape. So that is an isometry. An isometry is a transformation where the figure stays the same size and the same shape. Now this one also keeps the same orientation, but it doesn't have to do that to be an isometry. Okay, so in this one, we are taking all of those original points of our triangle, A, B, and C, and we're turning them into points that we call A prime, B prime, and C prime, and we put those little marks above A, B, and C for the primes. Now in this one, we move six units to the right and two units up, and then we can make a little rule out of that like this to tell what happens to every single point X and Y on our original triangle. So if we have, let's say, point B is negative three, one, we can find B prime by using that little rule of adding six to the X and adding two to the Y to find the new coordinates of B prime. And we can do that for any of the points. Okay, so now if we take our original triangle and we slide it over to the right and then down, sliding it down would be in the negative y direction so that we have y minus 5. And when we write the rule for that one, we would add 8 to the x and subtract 5 from the y. So if we had point A was negative 5, 4 and we wanted to find A prime, we could just use that rule to add 8 to the x and subtract 5 from the y to get the new x and y for a prime. And that's a translation. It's just sliding from one position to another position on the coordinate plane. Same size, same shape, same orientation. Now reflection is a little bit different because when we reflect something, we reflect it over a line so that we get a mirror image. Now there's a couple convenient lines that we can use here on the coordinate plane, the x-axis and the y-axis. So let's start by reflecting over the y-axis. When we reflect over the y-axis, this is now our mirror. So our reflection is going to be on the opposite side of the mirror. And when we reflect to the opposite side of the mirror, then you'll notice the orientation has changed because the points that were close like point C was close to the line that we're reflecting over. And so C prime is the closest point on the other side. B was farther away than C, so B prime is farther away than C prime. It's the same distance on the opposite side. And that's a reflection. You'll notice a reflection keeps the same size and same shape, so a reflection is also an isometry. Did you write down that word yet? Isometry, same size, same shape for any transformation is an isometry. Okay, so you'll notice also, oh yeah, I wanted to point this out. See point A and A prime, look at the coordinates. You'll notice that something stays the same and something changes. So whenever we do a reflection, you're going to want to notice like what is it that stays the same and what changes? All right, well, let's take a look at a reflection over the x-axis. So this is now going to be our mirror, the x-axis, and everything is going to go to the opposite side of the x-axis. And you notice that point A, which was way up here, the farthest point away from the x-axis, is now a prime way down here, the farthest point away from the x-axis. Okay, so the reflection changes the orientation. It's still the same size. Same shape, just reflected over that x-axis. Notice also um, point A, negative 3, 4. Now look at point A prime. Something stayed the same 
but something changed. Start to notice those things. And we can reflect over other lines as well. Here's a reflection over the line y equals x. And the same thing is true. The close points, like point C, is going to be C prime, close to the line that we're reflecting over. The far points, uh, like point A, is now going to be A prime, which is far away from the line over which we're reflecting. You notice I drew little dotted lines there to show where C went to C prime, and A became A prime, and B became B prime. And those are perpendicular to the line that we're reflecting over. So that's a reflection. Remember, a reflection is also an isometry because it keeps the same size and same shape. Now, rotation has to have a direction that goes with it because a rotation is a turn, and you can either turn to the right or you can turn to the left, except when we don't call them right and left. We call them clockwise or counterclockwise. So when we were when we turn something around, we tell what direction we're going in by saying clockwise or counterclockwise. So counterclockwise is the direction that would go this way. That's the same direction that we count for our quadrants. So if quadrant one is here, then we go counterclockwise to quadrant two and quadrant three and quadrant four. Same, same direction, counterclockwise. So if we're going to rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, we're really just going to the next quadrant. Okay, so let's see how that looks. When we go to the next quadrant, like that. Now, the point that we're using to rotate around is the origin. And so that's where the 90 degrees is. See, if we draw from point C to the origin and then to C prime, there's our 90 degrees right there. And that would be true from... A to the origin in A prime, and B to the origin in B prime. Okay, there's our 90 degrees. But that's uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise. Notice the triangle is the same size, same shape as before. So it is a what? Isometry. Okay, so an isometry for rotation. Remember, also a reflection and a translation. Those were also isometries. Okay. Let's take a look at a rotation that's 90 degrees clockwise. So to go clockwise, we're going this way, okay? And there is our new triangle. Notice that uh, this original triangle, ABC, was really close to the x-axis over here and on the BC side. And the new one after rotation is really close to the y-axis over here on the BC side because the x-axis and the y-axis are 90 degrees to each other. So when we have a 90-degree rotation, that kind of thing is going to happen. Okay? Now we can also rotate 180 degrees. When we rotate 180 degrees, it doesn't matter if you go clockwise or counterclockwise, you'll end up in the same place. Because 180 degrees is like a straight line, and there's our 180-degree angle. But we could also said there's our 180-degree angle. So it wouldn't have mattered which way we went. We would end up in the same location for 180 degrees rotation. Okay. And our last transformation is a dilation. Now, a dilation is not an isometry because we're going to change the size by using a scale factor it tells us how much larger or smaller our new dilation is going to be. So here's our original triangle, ABC. And when we draw a dilation, it's kind of like drawing one of those vanishing point drawings that you draw in art. You need a point for your vanishing point, and we're going to use the origin for that. It's called the center of dilation. And we're going to draw lines from there through each of the points of the triangle because our new points are going to end up on those lines. Except with a scale factor of 2, they're going to be twice as far away from the origin. Okay? And the new triangle is going to be twice as big. So you'll notice that point C was 4, 1. If you multiply both of those by 2, you'll get 8, 2. So C prime is H 2. The X and Y coordinates are twice as big as they were before because our scale factor is 2. 
And this side, BC, is twice as big as the side uh, that it was before the original BC uh, because our scale factor is 2. Okay, so that's a dilation, and that dilation is an enlargement because the scale factor is bigger than 1. If the scale factor is bigger than 1, you get an enlargement. Okay, now we can also make a dilation that's a reduction in size. And if we want a reduction in size, we're going to use a scale factor smaller than 1. So if we have a scale factor of 2 thirds like this, then we're going to do the same thing with our lines and our center of dilation. Draw those vanishing lines. And then find 2 thirds of each one of those x and y values to find your new points. And our new triangle now is two-thirds as big on each side as it was before. And each x and y value is two-thirds of its original from what it was before. Two-thirds of 9 is 6, and two-thirds of 3 is 2. And that would be true for all of these points. And that dilation is a reduction in size because the scale factor is smaller than 1. And there is your introduction to your transformations.